So today we're going to take a look at this uh, Stanford Research Systems uh, model FS725 Rupididium Frequency Standard. Um, I got this out of uh, some e-waste, I don't know, a couple years ago, and I had previously checked that it's worked. So today's plan is to just kind of give an overview of it, um, kind of show its operation a little bit. Um, so this was apparently at one point in a rack. You can see where the there's some uh, you know, scuffage on it from have it being in a rack. Probably was in a lab, I don't know, a cow lab or something. So it has a bunch of jacks on the back because uh, the front's very nondescript. Um, so we have all these B and Cs here. Um, this one says one one pulse per second output. Um, TTL which is what it says here and then we got 5 megahertz sign 10 megahertz sign another 10 megahertz sign uh, one pulse per second input TTL and then some kind of 0 to 5 volt frequency adjust um, looks like there must have been options to have multiple other outputs on it that this one doesn't have standard AC power input a ground RS-232 Alarms. Um, I guess a person could find the, try to find the manual for this to understand what what all that was for. Interestingly, there's no no power switch on this on the back or the front. So uh, it's very interesting. There's no no power switch. So uh, apparently, you just apply power and. And there you go. So what I'm going to do, we will uh, just plug in a cord and take a look at it. All right, I, I have a cord here. Um, it's already the other end of the cord is plugged into 120 volt AC. Um, let's just plug this in and flip it around. As it looks like, okay, there are there's a power LED here. And then we have a locked, and then there's some other uh, other information on it. All right, let's. Uh, I had noticed um, on other times I had this powered up, um, just to make sure it was not dead. That after a while, this locked LED comes on, and I'm wondering if that's just an indication of that the thing is warmed up. Uh, or, or something. Um, I will see if that comes back on. All right, so we're gonna try out what are the outputs on this. Um, so let's start with uh, we have this five five megahertz sine wave output. So I'm gonna connect up B and C cable here, and I have a scope here. Let's see what comes out of this. All right, all right. So our scope is probably aliasing. If that's a five megahertz sine wave output, let's uh, turning this up. Yes, it's aliasing. We're turning up the sweep speed. Okay, so we have a nice sine wave here, um, five volts per division. So this is a you know something just under 10 volts peak to peak and the auto auto measurement on the scope is saying yeah, it's about five megahertz there i frankly i'd trust this uh, standard before the scope to be more accurate unless this thing is grossly out all right um let's move that to the uh, 10 megahertz jack All right, so now all we have, yes, 10 megahertz. Um, I mean, this kind of indicates the scope is not out in the weeds either. The scope calculation is just off the, whatever it sees on the screen. Um, definitely not to the standard of, let's say, a frequency counter. And I do have a frequency counter, although quite an elderly one. 
and we'll try that one next and see uh, see what we get with that. All right, so I went out and dug up the frequency counter. In the meantime, I see that the uh, the locked LED has is now come on. All right, so we have this. Uh, I think it's like a late 70s era, maybe early 80s, uh, data precision uh, 5740 frequency counter that I've had in my collection for a while. Um, doesn't really get any use, um, but we'll uh, we'll see about what it's telling us about the the rubidium rubidium. I'm not sure how that's pronounced. Frequency counter. So let's hook this up. And, okay, turn this on. All right, well, all right, so that's saying, and I left that on the 10 megahertz jack on the back. Um, so this is saying 10,000 hertz, or, well, yeah, 10,000. So what, what's, what's our uh, kilohertz? Um, point oh second. I guess if you... Uh, Adjust this. Um, it always comes out ten, but all zeros, right? That one's reading zero. And I don't like that one. This is the trigger level over here. Maybe it's just overranged. All right. So I mean, it seems to. Be producing the right counts. I guess I need to let me take a look at the scaling factor on the knob here. I mean, it's obviously it should be 10 megahertz. This should be reporting 10 megahertz, and it, it probably I'm sure it is. It's just a case of uh, uh, where the zero point is. So me okay. So maybe this it this is in kilohertz. So this would be. Um, so 10 megahertz is 10,000 kilohertz, right? Is that right? I think so. And then kilohertz again. All right, so it's 10,000 kilohertz. Okay. And it won't report on this one. I think it's just overranged. Okay, right. So, yeah, producing uh, 10,000 kilohertz. I'm going to move the jack here in the back um, here over to the that 5 megahertz jack. And again, yes, we have 5,000 like you'd expect. Um, 5,000 kilohertz. Um, so one of the other jacks on here was uh, one pulse per second. I think that's the next one over. All right, what does that do? I think that's going to be a low frequency. Oops, reset it says. I don't know if that will produce anything here or not. It's not reading anything. Um, okay. It's like a 10 second thing, one pulse per second. So that might be a correct. Let's um, let's hook this back up to the scope and see what we get up there with this. Come on, push in here. Come on. There we go. All right. All right. Um, we want to change the trigger setting to normal. So if this is one pulse per second, okay. So the scope is triggering. I see it trigger, but we're not showing anything here. Um, why is that? I wonder what it's triggering on. 
Or is it an extremely skinny pulse at one pulse per second and I just can't see it? Um, let's assume that's true. I'm turning up the sweep speed. There's our pulse. Okay, so... Okay, so... I have a pulse here. I think the scope is set for a 10x probe, so that's why it's, yeah, and even before it was reading, I, I have the scale wrong. So, so we have a very skinny pulse here, um, which is, you know, something on the order of 10 microseconds, it looks like. However, it comes around, apparently, one, I mean, it should, according to the instrument, one pulse per second. So, yeah, um, you can't really see something like that on here. Uh, I can infer it by the fact if you're watching the, uh, the the trigger indicator on the scope that is coming around, you know, what appears to be approximately one per second, which would make sense. So, yeah, I really can't see that. Um, so what would be the setting on the frequency counter that we could see uh, one pulse per second with? So this is a 10 second thing, so that's showing, um, I mean, this seems to resolve it. If that's in kilohertz, so one pulse per second is one hertz, right? So, um, yeah, 0.001 kilohertz is one hertz therefore one pulse per second seems all right um, it's probably not the best counter to try to check something like that with but I mean it seems seems all right all right there you go um, checking out this uh, Stanford research uh, FS 725 rubidium frequency standard I mean uh, at least compared to a couple other things it seems like it's working fine but yeah, I found it in e-waste uh, a few years ago, and it's one of those things where okay, you can use it occasionally to you know check stuff with, but um, don't really have a daily use for something like this. Um, assuming it was in uh, some kind of cal rack at one point, doesn't look like it's super old, but you know probably 20 years old or something like that. All right, uh, all for now with this one.